Here's my 1952 Dodge Coronet. I installed a 3.9 V6 uh, fuel injected engine maybe five years ago. And as you can see, I don't drive it very often. And I was concerned about uh, maybe possibly damaging the engine when I do start it after it sits for a month or so. So I installed an engine oil pre-luber and I'll show you uh, how that works. I'll pop open the hood. So here's the uh, pre-oiler. It looks like a paintball CO2 canister. It has a, a 12 volt electric valve here and a T. Uh, it uh, has a rubber line that uh, is teed into the, where the oil pressure sending unit is in the back of the engine. And it also has another T up here. When you first install it, you can pressurize it with maybe 30 to 40 PSI of air. And so what happens is when you want to when you want to pressurize your engine before you start it, you flip a switch, open the valve, and the oil that's in here under pressure would get forced into the engine and oil uh, oil all the galleys and bearings and everything before the engine ever turns over. And then again, when you when you go to stop the engine, you'd open this valve again briefly to collect the oil under pressure and then shut the valve off so and then shut the engine off so the oil is stored in this can under pressure for the next time that you are about to start the engine. So we're inside the cabin of the 1952 Dodge Cornette and I'm going to show you uh, here's the oil pressure gauge. Uh, the engine's off and it's not indicating zero oil pressure. And under here is my switch that, uh, this switch here, labeled pre-oiler, that, uh, when I flip that switch, it's gonna open the valve and dump the pressurized oil into the engine. So I'll show you, uh, I'll go up here and turn the ignition on, and you can see there's no, uh, no oil pressure. So I'll reach down here and flip the switch, the dump the valve. You can hear it and you can see the oil pressure drop go up. So while it's up, I flip the switch back off and turn the key and start the engine. And then you can see the oil pressure builds even higher. You can also hear the engine started very quickly. And you know, I haven't, I haven't started this car in about three weeks and you can hear how quickly it turned over and started. You can tell a big difference in the, uh, when you pre-oil the engine and under pressure and start it versus when you just start it out and it almost, it sounds, it takes a lot longer for it to start. And I believe that contributes to the wear. And so now while the engine's idling and the oil pressure's kind of high, I'm gonna open the switch again and store the oil under pressure. What I do is open the valve and I rev the engine, you know, to build some more oil pressure. And then I flip the, flip the switch back and close the valve. So now I've recharged the oil tank under the hood and it's ready for the next time I get ready to start the car. And usually uh, I've learned that when when you don't drive a, a vehicle very often, and, but you end up starting it and moving it around a lot, what you end up doing, uh, it, it, you'll actually foul a couple spark plugs. Well, what happens is the spark plugs don't get up enough temperature to burn off uh, the fuel, and and also the fuel is running rich. And it'll if you, I learned that the hard way. I would I'd move this car around a lot when I was working on it, and, and I would just start it and move it, and turn it off. And uh, didn't take long. I started noticing the engine didn't run right and it was missing on cylinder one. Turned out the spark plug was fouled. So that's when I realized, well, I need to, if I'm gonna, ever, when I start this car, I need to let it run and let it get warm, let it build some heat in the engine, or I'm gonna continue to foul these spark plugs. The other thing I, I try to do, if I'm just moving it around on my driveway just to get it out of the way to work on something else. I, I might actually use a winch instead of starting it because I don't want to uh, 
or you know I don't want to start at the car run run, a, run the engine briefly but uh, that's just some things I've learned uh, with dealing with this old car thanks for watching